cooperative economy and traditional actors. That's why we entitled that afternoon Friends or Foes. Of course, uh, we will not uh, try to have to have oppositions between those two worlds. And our work this afternoon will be more to answer the questions that what kind of collaborations are in place uh, currently? What kind of collaborations could be fruitful from both sides? What is at stake? What are the barriers? And how to foster those collaborations? So we'll have a three step uh, or a uh, three uh, step sequence this afternoon. First a talk by Javier Cruz on the subject and he will introduce a kind of framework and give some examples. After we'll have a panel, uh, a very uh, interesting panel from uh, people from both sides and experts on the, that subject and uh, we'll see what they think of that uh, theme. Do they consider themselves as enemies or do they consider themselves as complementary? So I have a kind of answer, but we'll try to go deeper into that. And finally, um, we'll have a workshop and uh, we are all keen of uh, working with you on how to foster collaboration and how to uh, trigger uh, contributive strategies from large corporations. So I have... A, before we start with uh, Javier, I have first questions to know a little more uh, what kind of audience do we have. How many of you would uh, define themselves as coming from big companies, large corporations, legacy businesses? Right. Perfect. We are friends, right? <laughs> How many of you are, are coming from uh, startups from the co collaborative economy? Oh, quite the same. And the other are probably uh, kind of experts or... <laughs> I don't know how to frame you, Lauren. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, associations or uh, think tanks or... Yeah? Okay. Um, let's start. Okay. Javier? Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. Uh, well, I'm going to talk about this, just a way to introduce and to have a common language afterwards for the roundtable and especially for the workshop in which we have uh, put lots of energy and we hope it's going to be fruitful for everyone. Um, first thing is uh, we are under changing. What's this? Okay, so we are in... <laughs> <laughs> That's technology. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> it works like that, and this happens, no? so it's very easy. Now, what we're seeing is that production factors are changing dramatically, that if economy is defined by capital and work and resources that are available, all these three are changing dramatically. And that means new combinations of value can be created, and that's what we're seeing right now. For example, if we take capital, we can, we're all aware that money is not anymore what it used to be. In what sense? First is when everything occupies all the space and now we see money, uh, whether in, in every newspaper or in every uh, TV show, they talk about money and money is kind of invading uh, our lives and we all have to know how the risk of the country is evolving and what inflation is going to be. There's this Chinese say that says if you want something to be reduced, first let it expand. No, it's expanded so much that the money we know is going to shrink some way or another. What we've seen is money can be distributed, and we can see this with crowdfunding, for example. You don't need, if you need capital, you don't need to start with at least to go to very few people and have a yes or no answer. You can go to ten thousands of people, and perhaps, or maybe this time, or I'll trust you a little bit, is good enough. We're seeing how. Money is becoming social and it's based in trust. We have all these local currencies, but we have uh, Bitcoin as well, for example, in the sense that uh, we citizens have the power and the ability to generate money by ourselves and to use it, even time as money, for our own purposes. And we could realize, and there's a very significant change, is that a uh, century ago, if you bought something like capital, and you wanted to construct an automobile, for example, and that didn't go okay, and you wanted to shift to trains, the machinery you had bought was not useful at all. 
But right now, when you buy a computer or you buy a tab, uh, and you, you, you may not be successful in your first business, but with that same equipment, you can start another business. As a matter of fact, it's very difficult to know when you enter an office, whether you're in a startup or whether you're at La Poste or whether you're at an insurance company, because equipment is more or less the same. Second is the workforce. Workforce, we've, we've seen the emerging, and we're all part, I guess, of this collaborative citizen. The collaborative citizen is what I call someone who generates value by activating his or her assets and skills. And it does so with a preference for local, it does so uh, sometimes for money, sometimes for local currency, sometimes for free. It does so uh, with uh, conception of trust. We've been talking lots of trust these days, different to what we think. We see a lot of peer-to-peer -peer, uh, things working all right. And there are all those legal issues we discussed yesterday and that are going to be on for long. Third, <clears throat> we have nat natural resources. What we have now is everything we thought of is based in scarcity. Mm? And we are uh, educated uh, on thinking from scarcity uh, to business and product and business models and so on. Reality now is that we have many bits and very few atoms in the sense that Knowledge is abundant, mm? but very, very material things are either idle, mm? they are not used all the time, or they're even unused all of the time. And some things which are very important, such as uh, petroleum, such as raw materials, are really scarce. So we really need to change things. The thing is, when the whole system is changing, capital is changing, the workforce is changing, and available resources are changing, new combinations are impossible. And that makes that in this new framework, proprietary, which is the way at least I was brought up, and I was, uh, I was brought up in a way that uh, if you don't have the thing, you, it's not really yours. A place where everyone uh, gives their opinion is not a place that gets anywhere. No, what I've been seeing, and I'm observing reality, is that uh, not necessarily anymore, proprietary is more efficient, is better than shared. And we're going to go quickly through some examples to see how this is happening in diverse uh, contexts. For example, in the market, Wikipedia took three years, three years to stop Expedia. Not the Britannica, which is something different, but Expedia, you may remember, was the online uh, encyclopedia by, powered by Bill Gates, which is not a, a bad businessman at all who had all the resources to, to get the best editors, to get the best content, to best, get the best graphics. But um, we users in the market decided Wikipedia was best and grow, and it grew a much higher pace. Or for example, in organizational forms, last year was uh, the International Year of Cooperatives, and cooperatives have shown, for example, Mondragon in Spain, it's 80,000 employees or participants or cooperativists, no? And it's in very many industries, from tough industries like uh, auto parts industries to uh, electrodomestics and so on. And cooperatives, these places where uh, one person has a share of the company, so to say, and they, they make strategic decisions together when they've got to work they get hierarchical, as anyone else, when you get to work, even when you play football in a team, you've got a captain. But they've, they've demonstrated they're more resilient in this crisis than uh, traditional corporations. So we're learning that participation, even in the form of organization, is not that bad, and it may have some advantages when the environment is changing very, very fast. Or for example, in car manufacturing, I don't know what the situation is here, but at least in Spain, we were told all the time by multinationals that either they're able to produce five million cars or they don't have the economies of scale to stay in the place and that sort of things. Uh, I don't know how many of you know about Wikispeed. It was named yesterday as well. But this is a bunch of guys who decided to present themselves to the X prize. Uh, that's to say, how many kilometers can you run with a gallon of gasoline three or four years ago? And the way they did it is they set up a distributed way, volunteers building up a car. All they agreed upon was the eight uh, junctions about uh, among the parts of the car. For example, the 
<clears throat> the exterior of the car and the, and, the, and the wheels will be fixed by four uh, junctions. Mm? They worked distributely and they had a car running in three months. Mm? Industry takes uh, five years to build a new car. Or for example, we see it in scientific research. This man is Matt Todd. He was at the Open Knowledge Festival in Helsinki last year. And he did something very strange. He had the, his task was to create a low cost medicine for Chagas, which is an, a sickness in the north of Argentina, which has no, no, no medicines for it. And what he did was something very new. And instead of doing his uh, research and getting his data for himself, and after a year publishing an article about how this went, every afternoon after his experiments, he will publish the results of the experiments. And he got an agreement with Google Draw in a way that other scientists could see their data, but could as well draw molecules, no? And propose new combinations of molecules, of chemicals, mm, that would give a solution. And he got the solution again in four months. Mm. It takes laboratories a half of time to go this far. No? So we're starting to see that wherever you look, mm, you see that a new kind of sharing information, uh, distributing work, uh, putting things into common becomes more effective, more efficient, more quick mm, than traditional ways of doing things. Or last, for example, in culture or politics again. How many of you know about the Pirate Party? Mm? Well, Pirate Party was an idea born in 2006 when the first attempt uh, never succeeded to close the Pirate Bay and they created a political party. Well, this party, which is openly based in participation, assemblies are held uh, with the software called Mambo, which allows uh, multiple child and voice and so on. And even politicians who present themselves are voted among all who participate in the party. During 60 years, it's already in 60 countries. Mm? There's no other party in the world, no other political force in the world that's been able, one, to grow that fast, second, to keep the same basic program all along. The program, the specific program is created on it for each election, but though the, 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 the basic of the party travel, no? And we can see that in, in, in culture, for example, again. No, Digivating is a very well-known DJ, a commercial DJ. He, he's got a high cachet, one of the biggest in the world. And the way he does is he publishes openly his musical basis, his loops on the web, his fans, her fans, his fans, uh, play with the loops and create musical pieces. And when he's hired to do live, he, he punches uh, music made by his fans. You know? This way, with the same basis, with the same basic material, he gets an array of music he wouldn't have got anywhere, anywhere himself. And that's a way, as well, to have an engage, uh, and a different engagement with his, the people who love his music. So this is for openness, but we're seeing the same with platforms. And we know Airbnb in five years is managing half the rooms that Hilton took 100 years to manage, for example. And that's real growth. It's not, we're not talking 3% growth. We're not talking even 7% growth. We're talking something different. Or if we look, for example, at TaskRabbit, we realize they're doing more for employment there are many governmental agencies that are trying to relocate people. At least in Spain, you know, we have 25% uh, chômage. Mm -hmm. And industries like this, or job, Info Jobs, who is attending the Congress, they're doing a better job in some ways mm, than governmental agencies. So what we can tell is that uh, there are three different entities uh, playing in reality right now. There have always been, but now, the network, and especially the social networks, have allowed them to scale and to be ambitious up to a point we hadn't thought before. And the distinction I'm going to play with for a while, and then I'll, uh, as reality is mingled, uh, I'm going to race again, but we're going to play for a while, is that uh, my own definition is a community is a group of people who share a resource. Hmm? It could be a lake some, some time ago. It could be uh, a forest. Hmm? It, it can be the Wikipedia right now. It's a common resource. A corporation, it's a group of people. It could be the same group of people, but they don't think themselves as sharing a resource. They think themselves as sharing a goal. No, All of us who have either worked or consulted with corporations, we know about the mission. No, We know about objectives. 
So what's important in a corporation is not that much what you already have, it's what you don't have yet. Hmm? That's, that's where the pressure, where the vision is put, no? And markets, what do, what do share, such as Airbnb or TestRabbit or many others you know about, what they share is a platform. Hmm? So we're going to play and we're going to see the consequences and why in this big econo economical change, these three actors have different chances and different approaches to creating value. <clears throat> so communities manage for abundance, for abundance. Communities try to make abundance. That's their main aim. Uh, if you look at the people at Wikipedia, they would say, I would, make, I would like to make available any, low, any knowledge any human has to any other human. That's a way to create abundance. Or if you look at open source ecology, for example, I want to create open source machinery that will enable anyone to create a civilization from scratch anywhere. That's a way to create abundance. Hmm? What do corporations do? Corporations manage scarcity. Hmm? Not because they want, but they're meant to, in the sense that, uh, I mean, if you don't manage scarcity, you cannot capture value. Could Apple have sold an iPhone uh, two years ago for 90 euros, an iPhone 5 for 90 euros? Probably yes. Hmm? Was it the best business to do so? No, probably not. It's better to regulate through price, through distribution, who can access hmm, and capture more value. So their thought is basically about scarcity. Platforms, markets deal with occupation. Their focus is on idle resources, and what they manage is not abundance, but uh, nor scarcity, but how to move these assets as they get the maximum usage, the maximum occupation at any time. We've seen that they share either resources or goals or platforms. So when you're in a community, your priority is conservation. The most, as you share a resource, your main objective is at least that that you have inherited or that you have created yourself doesn't disappear. If we were a community taking care of the boat, we would first of all take care that nothing uh, gets wrong, and after that, we would uh, get with more ideas. While corporations have a need, hmm, an internal need for conquest, what's relevant is not what they actually have, but we want to conquest the Asian market. We want to conquest the, uh, the business to business market. We want to conquest whatever. Priority in markets is for usage. That's, a, that's the main idea. No idle resources. If you have a spare bedroom, uh, put it into our platform. If you have a spare car, please put it in our platform as well. The value valence resultant is that communities add value to the system as they first conserve whatever they have and then they try to upgrade. They, they create a positive value. Corporations play to capture all the value they create so the best, the, the, their best outcome is they can remain equal. Hmm? If you generate so much value and you capture it, best outcome is you remain equal. And platforms are able to create value by generating occupation on idle resources. Development is stigmatic, kind of spontaneous within communities. No one tells anyone where to build, where to write about China or India within the Wikipedia. No one is governing in a way. It's ideas and mirror meritocracy, which are building up. There's planning corporations, and you know how planning works. If you're very successful, you can build, you can accomplish your plan, but the most frequent case is you miss a your plan by a little bit, and markets develop in an accelerated way. They usually take, we're seeing lots of experience here, one, two, three, four years until they become established, and then they bloom. Users, and that's very important, in communities are called contributors. If you're using Linux, for example, you're not just a user, you're helping expand Linux as a standard for the industry, so you're contributing to the common itself. When you talk corporations, you're talking customers, and it's more transactional, we were hearing this morning, than relational or contributing in a sense. And for makers, you, you, users are askers. I'm asking for a car, I'm asking for whatever. Producers, that's very important as well. Communities generate inter entrepreneurs. Anyone can build travel guides out of Wikipedia. Anyone can build its own solar machine out of open source ecology. So you have a common resource and you can make a living business out of it. You no, know? 
while corporations have employees, we've all been employees um, sometime or another. You know, it's a different feeling. You be you may be very aligned with the with the organization, but yet it's not your own show. Not always your own ideas or the ideas of your the group you want to work with get through. And uh, markets, I put owners, but yesterday I listened to partners, and I like it much more. Huh? I haven't had time to change it. But producers in this kind of platforms are basically business partners. If you have a car and you put it in social car, for example, you become a partner in the sense you're sharing income of that usage of the car. Okay, here we're back. So the vision communities have is a systemic vision. Mm? They want to ameliorate all of the system, mm? while corporations usually center themselves in needs. You no, know? they have to define needs very time, many times, very specifically, and they have a hard time relating the needs they they are able to satisfy with the rest of the system. Uh, if you sell. Tooth, tooth, toothpaste. Uh, you're centered very much in the toothpaste, but it's taken them a long time to get into uh, health or to get into some type of thing that's related uh, to, to the whole thing. And market centered their vision in, in idle resources. So what we're finding is that uh, communities rely themselves on a resilient scale. They can grow very much, but they, they, they never overgrow. Hmm? In the sense when they don't come, become efficient anymore, they may split, they may fork, as in GitHub. Or corporations stand themselves theoretically on efficiency, and that was, that's why they find economies of scale. But with distributed economy, economies of scale are not that much relevant anymore. But if you get big enough, what you, are, what you become is a policymaker rather uh, than more efficient. So you have the power to influence governments and local authorities. And uh, markets, platforms, they're in a game where mostly winner takes all. When you've got these sort of platforms, it's very difficult to have uh, seven for choice. It's usually going to be a very traditional kind of competitive setup with a winner taking 40, per 40 to 50% of the market, one main competitor, and two or three niche or uh, local competitors. So these three ways of getting into reality, these three ways of generating value, are getting mixed on reality. That's what I mean by the yin yang. So they may they may seem very far one from the another, but reality is we share the same environment, we share the rea same reality, we compete in the same market. So we can see how common generate entrepreneurs and uh, Arduino. You may know it's an open source electronic uh, kick. The people who built it gave out the plans, but only reserved the trademark. You can build it in yourself at your house or a Chinese factory, but if you want to use the brand, you pay 10% to them. They reserve just a little. They generate value for the whole system. They reserve only the trademark. Or we can see big corporations such as Google, when it got into the mobile space, and it saw Apple was so dominant, say, can I get into the mobile space just by myself, even if I'm the leading on the internet? And he said, I cannot do it by myself, but if I open up Android to everyone, maybe a community and me, we can overtake Apple. Last semester, semester in Spain, 92% of the sales were from Android. Or General Electric, uh, last week, decided to open up thousands of patents they don't use anymore, and they were not putting research anymore to quirky community to edit products out of that. And rather have a 10% stake in a new product that keep on paying for intellectual property they weren't using anymore. So my question is, and the common challenge we have is, can we devise strategies that uh, at the same time contribute to the system, to the whole system, while developing at the same time a competitive sustainable position? And that's, that's what we, we are on the table are, are looking at. How can you really contribute to the system? How you keep a sustainable position? And our answer is that it is for change, what we call the strategies of contribution. And the way to go about, and uh, that's the way we're going to work on the workshop afterwards, is iterating three questions until you find a business model that suits you. And these three questions is, what can I share openly? Where can I create a potency? To which communities can I offer support? So I get at least an arm hmm, to that high growth kind of economy. 
with whom can I cooperate for innovation? It's very hard within a company to have all the bright ideas within. Mm? And what to keep when you give value to the whole system so you become sustainable on the long term. So uh, I'm giving time for the round table now. But the question is, corporations can either resist or take advantage. And what we're trying to do today is let them, allow them, and think together how can they take advantage, how they can foster change, how they become themselves more efficient by putting into value, giving value to their unused and idle resources. Thank you.